All right, what's up everyone? This is Don with Third Creative and this is the walkthrough tutorial video for The Arena. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through all of the layers, the processes. I'm gonna be extremely thorough and hopefully I'll cover anything and everything that you might need to know in order to create the best images possible with this design. Um, a few things that I like about this design. Um, one is the option for single pose or double pose. Uh, single pose is most commonly used, obviously, but there's some scenarios where the double pose uh, is a nice option to have. I specifically or particularly like it for uh, banners or senior banners. Um, also, with the background being um, the lights and the, the roof or ceiling of an arena, thus the title, the arena. Um, it's obviously an indoor multi-sport design and I wanted to include some textures that would work for hopefully any indoor sport. Um, so I've got an ice texture, uh, hardwood, grunge, and water. So some nice options there. You can see a few more sample images, different colors. Um, I've got another single pose in there. Uh, but let's jump into it. Um, I'm going to work with the 2x3 vertical and just keep in mind that what I cover uh, with this file will be consistent for the other files as well. Um, there's a few uh, specific things that I'll cover with the horizontal file and the memory mate file, but other than that, um, everything should be consistent across the board. So let's jump into it. It's always a good idea to get familiar with the layers. I like to go in and turn things on and off and just see what's what and uh, where everything is. So never hurts, um, but let's go ahead and start at the bottom. We've got our background layers folder. If you open it up, you can see we've got a few things. We've got lower background color. We've got our indoor upper background. Um, you can see that's the lights and the, the ceiling that you see here. We've got three uh, fog layers. We've got lower fog, we've got a background which is kind of in the middle, and then we've got an upper. Um, they all have color overlay, so you can go in there and play with them to get uh, different levels of contrast. Um, if you wanted to, um, they're basically all set to white. Um, but there is a color overlay that's clipped to the folder and that's where the color is coming from. So if I turn this layer off here, you can see that it, it just goes to grayscale. Um, so if you want to change the color, you probably don't need to open this folder unless you really want to fine tune things. Um, but you can just double click this box here. You'll get your color picker to open up and then you just select the color uh, the level of saturation, lightness, darkness that you want. Very simple. Um, when I was making my sample images, one thing I did run into was um, the vignette. So this layer right here, if I turn it off, you can see it just darkens the corners, the edges. It adds a, a vignette. It's an exposure uh, adjustment layer. Uh, there were situations where I wanted either more as in darker or less. So if you want less, you could always just, um, or less or more, you could reduce or increase the opacity at set to 50%. You can also double click the box here. Your properties window should come up and then this top slider, if you want more, you can slide it to the left. If you want less, you slide it to the right. You start to get the opposite effect, which probably isn't something you wanna do. Um, but if you feel like the corners are too dark or not dark enough, you either adjust the opacity or open up the properties and adjust it here. So let's get it back to its original state. Um, another thing, let's see here, while we're in here, I'm going to turn off this upper. You can kind of see this railing here, um, but you start to lose a lot of the detail, which is because of this gradient mask. Um, 
So if you're doing a single pose and you want a little bit more of that to show, uh, a few things you can do. You can unlock this layer mask by clicking on this little chain link. And then when you do that, go to your move tool and click on an anchor point and you can drag it down a little bit. Actually, don't do it that way. Click on this bottom anchor point and drag it down and you'll start to reveal a little bit more in detail if you want it. Um, so that's something else that I ran into when I was creating the uh, sample images. Just depends on how much of that you want to show. Um, I think that's pretty much it for the background layers. Next we have um, our upper tab layer. So that's referring to this little section right here. If we open it up, we can take a look at what we have. So first we've got our textures, which I have hardwood selected. If you want something else, just turn off hardwood here and turn on the one that you want. Um, so we've got our ice, we've got our grunge, turn that off. We've got our water. Um, now I have some adjustments or levels adjustments. If you click on these little down arrows, you can see they have level adjustments. So I try to set them up so that they would look good, but um, you may decide that you want to go in there and play with the levels a little bit. You know, this does lighten the color using the ice, but you, you know, you need to be able to see those lines. So if I turn the levels off, it really lightens it. So I darkened it up. Um, I also have the opacity at 50%, so you can increase opacity, you can reduce opacity, you can open up the levels, and if you want more darks to show, you can do that. If you want your lights to be less, move this to the right. If you're not familiar with levels, you can find a quick YouTube video to uh, walk you through. But it's these anchor points here that you can move around to adjust. Probably not something most of you will want or need to do. Um, but I wanted to explain that if, it, if the color and the scheme that you come up with, if you feel like it needs something, you can always go in and play with the opacity and or adjust the levels if you want to. Um, here we have our upper text. So we've got our text here and you would change the color. If you double click on the T, you'll get a color picker up here. So you can change the color to anything that you want. Um, or I'd like to keep my properties window right here. So just clicking on or selecting this text layer. I've got this color picker here. Very simple. Um, you'll notice um, I have kerning set to 25, so that added a little bit of space between the letters. You can always adjust this. If I go with zero, it's going to bring it all closer together. You can enter a higher value like 100. It'll kind of widen it out and add more space in between. So. It's extra detail, but if you want to play with that to fill the space right, you can. But by default, it's set to uh, 25. And then, of course, you can you can always adjust the actual size here. It's got a value of 45, so you can go bigger or smaller. Now, now that I have that bigger, I'm gonna. I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to use my arrow key to bring it down. Let's say you did want it bigger. Well, it runs off of the space. So maybe you type something different and it's longer and you need to adjust this. Um, you can come down. There's a subfolder that says um, upper subtext tab. So I'm calling this a tab. And then inside the folder, we have this shape layer. So if you select the shape layer and uh, I'm going to hold down shift, click on this anchor point, drag down, or drag, <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to click on this upper anchor point, holding down shift. You can drag down to bring it in. You can drag up to bring it out. Once you have it the width that you want, click the check. And now you can use your arrow key up or down 
to bring more of it down if you want to. So that's how you can adjust the actual size of it. Let's go back and let's see color. So if the actual color of the tab is on this shape layer, you can see that here. We've got a color overlay. So double click the word color overlay. Click this little box here and pick the color that you want. Pretty simple. There is also an inner shadow. So you're not going to see it very well because the shadow is down. You can kind of see it along the edges here. So if you double click on that and select the inner shadow, you can play with the opacity. Come up a little bit higher if you wanted to. Um, size, distance. You can play around with that if you need to. Uh, let's see. Next we have, or actually in the subfolder or on the subfolder, we have um, we have a drop shadow that you can add if you need a little bit of separation. And then we have the stroke, and that's where this white border is coming from. So if you double click the word stroke, it'll bring up the layer style window. Very simple, just click this little box here and you can select the color that you want for your stroke. You can also increase or decrease the size. Just keep in mind that if you do that, you'll wanna probably apply the same changes to the tab that's down here at the bottom so that they match. Um, but that is it for the upper tab. Let's go back to original state again. We'll close that up. Next, we have our upper subject image. So this is the folder that you would insert your subject images and you would scale them how you want them, um, position them how you want them. I did this a little bit different. Um, you can see we've got this fake um, color, kind of like a cast from the background. Um, I left that separate, I didn't merge it um, just so you could see, if you turn it off, it really changes the look. Um, obviously, one looks much better than the other. Um, not everyone is going to want to take the time to add these um, fake colored gel edge lights. Um, in fact, most of you probably won't, but if you do, um, I try to make it as simple as possible. So if you drop your subject in here, um, we've got this layer. It's turned off. You can turn it on. There's nothing on there. Um, but it says re reusable fake gel edge watch tutorial. Well, this is the tutorial. I'm not going to go into a full blend if um, breakdown. But if you want to learn more about how you set this layer up or how blend if works, which is what allows me to create this look, um, there's plenty of videos on YouTube you can jump into. Maybe I'll make a thorough one someday. But what you do want to do is, and you can duplicate this as many times as you want to. Right click, duplicate layer, and make as many as you want so that as you add subjects in here, each one will have their own. Um, you can also hold down Option on a Mac, click and drag down until you see this blue line. That duplicates it. But I'm going to put it right over my subject. I'm going to pretend this one hasn't been done. And if it's not already clipped, you can uh, right, clip, right click and select Create Clipping Mask right here. Uh, we'll undo that. Or on a Mac, you hold down Option and then hover in between. You'll see this little down arrow and click and it will clip. So this just makes, makes it so that everything you do um, will only apply to the layer that it's clipped to. It won't show up on anything else. So now we have this um, layer clipped. I'm going to double click on the layer to bring up the layer style and under blending options you can kind of see what I have by default. You may want to play with these which I'll explain a little bit here in a second but just to start off what I would do it's already set to a color blend mode. Um, we will take your brush and your brush tool. Make sure that you're working with a soft round brush. Um, this one by default I have set up at 20% opacity, flow is 
You know, there's different ways to do this, but I like to do it at a lower opacity. I might change it to 30 and 30 just so I don't have to do too many repetitive brush strokes. All right, and I'm going to hold down Option to get my little eyedropper here, and I'm going to pick a blue. It's kind of dark. I think I want to go with a lighter blue. That's a good starting point, and then you can click on this and adjust it. So I might go with something like that. And so I'm going to use my right bracket key to increase the size of the brush. This is um, a soft brush, so it has um, the hardness is at zero. And I'm just start painting it in. And you can be as, I'm doing this very quick, so you can be as detailed or meticulous as you want. Now the idea is, is these highlights that are coming on the side is what you want to hit. I'm going to make it a little smaller, and I'm going to come in and start to get this highlight along the side of his face. I'm going to go ahead and color over the ear. We'll do the same on this side. A little bit over the ear. We want the highlight on the side of his neck, both sides. And it's not going to show up really as much on the uniform because it's all darks. Just kind of start to build it up. You get the idea. And so if I turn that off, turn it on, just gives you a little bit of that effect. Now, I said I wasn't going to be thorough, but I will explain one thing. If you double click on this layer where you're adding this, this fake um, color edge light, you'll get this. You can move these anchor points around. So if I drag this to the left, you see it really, excuse me, really starts to show up. You just want to be careful because you know you want it to be realistic. You can drag this one to the left to get it away from the darks a little bit more. You can play around with it. I tried to set it up at you know a, a state that would just work in most situations, but you can fine tune it if you want. Again, go into YouTube if you're not familiar with Blendef and uh, watch a a thorough video that explains how all, all of this works. But that is a very um, quick demonstration of how you can add these fake edge lights to match the color of your background. Um, let's move on. Okay, so now that we've covered that, um, we have a layer mask that's on here. And this just keeps any of the, the uh, subject image from showing below the V. So if you were to move the V or do anything, let's turn the V off. Turn that off, you can see this hard edge. So you can click this chain link to unlock it, select, make sure the, the mask is selected and not the entire layer folder. You can kind of see how it's highlighted with this move tool. You can now use your arrow up or down, or you can click and just drag down. I'm going to be careful because it can move left or right, and you can see that it starts to reveal. So if you need to adjust that for any reason, you can. Um, let's see clip to it we have a color fade over upper subject change color so if I turn that off let's turn the V back on you can kind of see what happens um, that didn't look quite right and so I added this color overlay and I put this gradient mask on it if I turn the gradient mask off you can see what happens so basically you just double click here you've already got your background color selected and you can paste the same color in here or you can just use your dropper to come in and find a color that's very close to what the background is right here and this will 
add this little effect so kind of looks like he's in a blue haze same thing with the layer mask I don't know if I unlock that or if it's already unlocked but if you select the layer mask you can click hold drag it up you can drag it down to adjust it if you want or need to uh, but just pick a color that works with the background uh, next we have our v-shape layer so let's see let's turn this off so we can kind of get a better look so I've got a gradient mask here if you turn it off you can see it reveals more so it might show in between the players legs potentially um, so it just kind of looks like it's starting to be submerged in this hazy fog by having this uh, layer mask just like all of them unlock it and you can adjust it if you want to moving it up and down let's see let's open it up and take a look what we have so here we have the same texture options I won't go into all those details um, other than just you can adjust the opacity or you can play with the levels if you want to but turn on the uh, texture that you want you got your ice your grunge your water sometimes you might add grunge um, to it so I've got hardwood and grunge you can see depending on what you want and this is a situation where you might bring the grunge down a little bit if you just want a little more grittiness you can you can double these up in some scenarios uh, let's see so that's our textures we've got a subfolder entitled V shape layers it has a drop shadow on it so if I turn that off you can see we lose this drop shadow down here you can adjust the drop shadow with the opacity by double clicking drop shadow it'll bring this layer styles up and you can play with the distance size and opacity if you want to it should be at a good at a good value level but um, you know if you go with a lighter color background you might want to reduce that a little bit um, inside that subfolder we have another subfolder if we open it up you can see what's inside it's just two rectangular shape layers so this is the V shape layer so changing the color um, the primary color and these the stroke outline colors will be done on this subfolder here V shape change colors um, so color overlay we'll click on that that's where the reds coming in you can change it um, with this box here we also have um, an inner shadow you can see it right here just adds a little bit of dimension if you don't want that you can turn it off um, and of course just like any drop shadow or inner shadow you can adjust the values if you need to um, stroke outline here we've got our outside one which is white same thing you can move around and and pick a color that works and then this is the inner stroke this top one same thing you can adjust the color by clicking on the box you can also adjust the size so if I want this inner one to be smaller it can reduce the size if I want it to be bigger increase the size same thing with the other one you got a little bit more space you can go that wide maxing it out at 250 um, but if I cancel that another thing you can do is select this folder here and with your move tool selected you can click on this anchor point I'm going to hold down shift to maintain the propor uh, proportions excuse me but if you're holding down shift you click on this anchor point and you drag down now you're losing it but I'm just basically making it bigger I can drag it back up we'll drag it up this far we'll drag it down a little bit more you can drag it or scale it as much as you want to to make it as big as you want to um, so that is a way that you can make it bigger um, of course you can turn off the strokes if you want so many different things you can do to get different looks um, but that is pretty much how the V-shape stripe layers work. Um, next we've got fog behind lower subjects. So if I turn that off, you can just see it's just a little extra fog. We'll turn the lower subject back on. Um, changing the color is very simple. 
you can just use this color overlay that's clipped to the folder. Again, double click in the little color box and pick the color that you want. If you turn it off, it will be grayscale. You can always, if you really want to get detailed and you want um, different colors or different shades, you can just come in here and use these color overlays on each layer that's inside this fog folder. We'll turn this on. More likely you'll just keep it simple and select a, a shade that works with the background color that you already have. Next we have our lower subject or single subject, which I misspelled single subject here. That's nice, but surely you will figure it out. Go ahead and correct that now. If you open it up, same thing. You've got um, a folder to insert your subject images. I have two subfolders. So I have um, a sample for a lower subject image. And if I turn that off, and I also come down here and turn off the upper, you can then turn this on to see what the full example looks like. And so it's just up to you. You put your uh, subject in here. If you want a double pose, then you would just scale them smaller down here and leave this folder on. If you want single pose, we're going to turn this off and you're going to scale your subject like this. I did go ahead and include the reusable fake gel edge layer that we talked about earlier. So if you want to do the same thing to your low, lower subjects, just keep duplicating this layer, clipping it to your subjects, and um, hopefully that will ha help make a, a long process a little shorter for you. We'll turn that back on. Um, again, we've got a gradient layer mask, and so that's where the, the fade comes from if we turn these text layers off. You can adjust it by unlocking it, making sure you have your layer mask selected. You can click and drag up, down. Um, that's the, it's kind of a cheating way to do it. Um, you can always select your gradient tool. Make sure that you have black to white, white to black. Hold down shift, click, drag up. That's backwards, so we'll move this here. Bring this down, and by holding shift, I can get it to snap straight. And you can adjust these points how you want. If you come up too much, you'll start to see the V-shape behind them. So you just have to keep that in mind. Uh, more than likely, you'll do it the, the cheating way, which is just using your move tool to move it up or down. You can also come up here and do it that way. It's a little more gradual if you were to do it from the top. Um, next, we've got our lower foreground fog. If you open it up, there's a couple layers in there, so it's, it's just like this one down here. Um, you just want to use this clipped color overlay to select a color. Um, and that's if you feel like you need it. Um, we have these text layers, so if I turn this off, you see a little bit more. It just makes it look like he's a little more submerged in this fog. Now, one thing you can do, or I was doing on some of the sample images, is just selecting this folder using the Move tool and clicking and dragging down and dragging up. You can see if it comes up too high, you can drag it down. You can play around with it like that just to adjust how high it comes up. Um, next, we have our lower tab layer. So let's take a look at that. This is pretty much just like the upper tab layers with um, a few difference, well, one difference. Um, we've got our textures, so all of the same applies. Pick the textures that you want. You probably want to make sure that if you make any changes to the opacity um, or the levels or anything like that, that you make them match what you did at the top down at the bottom. Um, here we've got, um, gosh, we've got another spelling. Oh, wait, no, it's not a spelling area. I just can't read. Tab subtext, option one. So if you turn that off, you can see it's, it's where it says varsity. You can change what it says. If I zoom in here, 
I wanted uh, a tail and this particular font didn't allow for that so you can see, or a swoosh so it's its own separate layer so if you change what it says so um, what if we go with Mavs uh, you can still use the tail as an underline in fact you can select it click on any of these anchors you can make it skinnier you can make it wider and if you hover out here you see how the you get this curved arrow click and then move it to rotate it but you can adjust it to what you have and then what I would do is select both by holding down shift I've got them both selected now I'm going to click, I'm going to hold down shift to maintain the proportions and I'm going to scale it up and make it fit where it's partially covered on the edges. But you get the idea. So that's how that's set up. But if you are creating for a varsity team and you just want to leave it the way that it comes, then it's a lot easier. You would just select both of these at the same time and change your color. Um, let's see, we've got our lower tab. We've already talked about this. You can change your stroke color, the stroke size. You just want to make sure everything matches the top tab. Um, change the color. Now, I didn't mention it, but when you change the color to the other tab, you notice this code here is already highlighted. If you hold down Control or Command C, it'll copy it. Then when you bring up the next one, you can hold down Control or Command and hit V, and it'll paste it in there. Just a way to keep it consistent. And that is all for the lower tab. Moving along, we've got our optional color grading layers. So this is a good one to talk about. Let me get everything turned back on. So this is another thing that you may want to make sure that you turn off. You can see it loses some of its warmth and contrast. Um, if I turn it on, it just kind of helps bring everything together. It makes it a little more punchy. But we'll open it up and see what's going on here. So what I have here is a warm contrast color lookup, also known as a LUT and it's only at 5%. So if you turn that off, you can see it's very subtle, but it loses some of its warmth, it loses loses some of its contrast. Here I have two different color overlays. They are both set to soft light. They are both at only 5%, but I have two different colors. I have a blue and an orange. So if I turn off the blue, you can see it loses some of its contrast and it gets just a little warmer. I turn off the orange you can see it loses some of its warmth and it also contrast it gets a little bit cooler um, these are only at five percent so it's very subtle you can get carried away if I start to bring this up you see what happens you know that's just 51 percent that doesn't look good at all so if you change the opacity value or these colors just uh, just be careful not to get too carried away you don't want it too dark and contrasty. It won't, it won't look well when you print. But you, um, you have to decide with the color you know, that you're going with as for your background if this works or not. You can change these colors. So I could come with something you know, a little different. You can change this to something a little more towards yellow, a little more towards red. Play around with it. See what looks good you may decide to just turn it off completely. But it is there. Um, it just helps tie everything together and give it a little extra punch if you want to use it. Just remember it is turned on by default. So if you don't want it, come up here and turn it off. All right, we're getting there. Uh, we've got our lower text layers. If I open this up, you can see what we have. Player name. Um, looking at our let's character panel here. Um, there's no kerning. And um, you can change the size here uh, or the value, increase it or decrease it. Um, it is 
set to uh, center. So if you were to type something new in, it should stay centered. Um, you'll notice that I have a red first name and a white last name. So if you want to retain that look, you cannot just you know, highlight everything and start typing. You lose it. It'll just stick with the first color. So if you want to keep it two colors, you'll double click here, get everything selected. Now, bring your cursor in between the first and the last name, click, drag to the left, select the first name. This is also where you can change the color if you want to. Let's see. And once you get your colors how you want it, then you don't ever have to deal with the colors again. You would just type a new first name, a new last name, and that's it. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Unfortunately, it's not good for automation. I think it looks good having a, a different color first name than last name, but it doesn't look bad if you have it all one color either. Um, here we have our subtext for our classification. So junior is turned on. You can either you know type over it, especially if you're using automation and just have one layer. Or if you're doing it manually, you just turn on the one that you need. Same thing as far as changing color, very simple. Um, come up here or here in your character panel. Um, year or years. So this is set up to have two years um, so that they're on both sides. You may decide that you want to go with a single year. And if you do, let's see. Let's do 2025 and select it. Obviously that doesn't work, so we would want to move this up. And if you do that, you may end up selecting the entire folder here and moving it up just to give it a little bit more room. Um, but that is up to you. It depends on the sport. I know that sports that overlap years, at least the parents I deal with, they like it to say both years. Um, and then it gets a little weird when it's a senior because they don't want any year other than their graduating year. But I always get clarification ahead of time on, on what they want it to say as far as the year. So this, very simple, changing the colors the same way. Um, if we get down the road and it needs to be, you know, different, then we can change. What I would do is just highlight the last number, oops, click and drag to highlight that. So now we have 25, 26. If you make this bottom one any bigger, just click in the middle, hit the space bar until it's wide enough. Um, let's say that we did make it bigger and you had something like this going on. So hitting the space bar will take care of that. Um, let's see, that is it. I mean, that's a lot, but that's it. Um, the only other thing that we need to cover is uh, the memory mate, and I also want to talk about the horizontal file. Not a lot to cover in either of these. The main thing that I wanted to cover with the horizontal file, you know, that isn't something that we've already talked about, is the team subject to images. So, we open it up I have subfolders with gradient masks and so row one if I turn it off you can kind of see you know they're the lowest I have a row two but there's only two people so I've got it here so it really just depends on how you set up your team how many rows you have how you arrange them you may want them all in one row with one gradient mask. If I turn the gradient mask off, you can see what happens. So it just fades them. And just like we talked about before, you can use your black to white gradient tool to adjust this gradient mask. Make sure you have the gradient mask selected or you can unlock it and use the move tool. Sliding this up or down and then moving the whole thing that's the, the easy or the cheat way. 
Um, so you can duplicate any of these to get an additional folder depending on how many rows you have. And just keep in mind that you have to adjust, you probably will have to adjust these gradient masks to work with the way that you lay your team out. Unless you do it exactly like I have it, um, which isn't likely, you know, it just depends on how many, how many people are in the team that you're working with. But that is the one thing that I wanted to explain about the horizontal file. Everything else is pretty much the same. The very last thing to cover, and if you're familiar with um, any of the previous memory mates, you're already familiar with this. But you want to start with your 5x4 file, create your team image. This is what you see here. Save it as a JPEG. Once you have your team image saved as a JPEG, you can use this memory mate file um, by opening this bottom red folder here or lower red folder it says insert 5x4 team image so let's turn that off let's pretend that we don't have that yet I've got it uh, ready to go here so let's say this is my new team image that I created you would just simply drag and drop now let's going to scale it to fill the entire frame so I'm gonna hold down shift click on a corner to scale it down I'll come up to this corner, still holding shift, scale it down. You can scale it as large or as small as you want it. You can position it exactly how you want it. Try to center it up with the name text. Once you have it how you like it, we will hit the check mark. So it did not actually go in the folder. Let's drop it in there. By having it in the folder, um, the stroke outline will automatically apply. So will the uh, inner shadow that you can barely see here and the drop shadow, which you can definitely see here. So I may move this up so it's not on top of the name. Um, but you would change the stroke color by clicking on the word stroke. You can change it to anything you like. Um, you can turn on or off any of these just depends on the look that you want um, the one thing or the last thing that I think I will explain is that we we still have this optional color grading layers uh, folder here you can see all of them the problem that you may run into is that if you create a team image that already has color grading applied and I were to leave this up at the top um, where it applies to everything then you get two times the effect, which probably isn't going to look right. For one thing, your subject will have, you know, the normal amount of color grading and your team image would have double the amount. So trying to think of ways around that, um, one is that you can create using the team file or the, the four by five or five by four team file, you can create a version without color grading so that when you drop it in here it can just apply you know you can move this up and it can apply to everything um, let's undo that um, otherwise what you can do is is make your color grading match not only here which is below this folder where your team image is and you can make these match the same values and they are clipped to the subject and so by doing it this way it just makes sure that the color grading gets applied to the subject and the background but not the team image that you drop in there maybe there's an easier way uh, I'm really not sure I like giving you the option of the color grading um, but that is one complication that you run into so again just create an image um, a team image without color grading to specifically be used for the memory mate or just make sure that they match in this folder and up here and that way it won't apply two times the amount all right I think I've really driven that home and this like all videos is really long but that is it finally hopefully I've covered anything and everything that you'll need to know but if I did not and you still have questions uh, feel free to shoot me an email don at thirdcreative.com 
Um, but that is all I have for this one. It's time to move on to the next one. So until then, we'll see you.